Please stand with us for our first song. I search the world, but it couldn't fill me. Men's empty praise and treasures that fade are never enough. Then you came along and you put me back together. the God of the mountain is the God of the valley. There's not a place your mercy and grace won't find me again. Oh, there's nothing
Welcome to Maplewood United Methodist Church. We are so glad that you're worshiping with us, whether you're online or in person, whether today is Sunday morning or Friday evening at 11 p.m. Just glad that you're joining us and hope that the music and the message and the time together will be a strengthening force in your life and give you hope. Now, I have to explain because everybody's asked, and I said I had the tension of whether waiting till the end and having you spend the entire time trying to figure out why I'm wearing a Red Sox jer jersey or let you relax. Today is my, would be my grandmother Williams's birthday. 
and she never missed a Red Sox game. She listened to them on the radio, she watched them on TV, and I'll talk more about what it means that she taught me about being a Red Sox fan because I will, even though I have actually never watched, well, I can't say that I've watched the World Series. I was going to say I've never watched a game, but I'm still a Red Sox fan. Uh, so I am celebrating her today, and it also, you'll hear about it as we get to the message. As we gather here today, I hope that you feel Christ in your heart and that the Holy Spirit lifts you up. We hope that if you appreciate the ministry and missions of Maplewood United Methodist Church, that you'll give to those either through the offering plates here, using our app, and the ability to give online, as well as through our website is the same connection to be able to give online. So welcome. Are there kids now? Wilson seems to have disappeared. Oh, he's made a new friend. Are you ready? <laughs> Are you ready to come on down, Wilson? Okay. Jesus loves me, this I know. Well, Wilson, I see you wore green today. Why did you wear green today? You don't remember how to say it? You want to try? Okay, here. Is it because it's St. Patrick's Day? Yep, yep, yep. Well, I didn't wear green today. I forgot, but I brought something green. I found this kind of funny looking plant. Do you think it's funny looking? Yeah, I'm having a hard time with it. You never saw a plant like that? Well, it's kind of funny looking, isn't it? So it's got all these leaves on it. So I brought a leaf and look how funny looking it is. It's got all these parts, right? So how many parts does it have? Okay, you count. Three? There's three parts to it. So is it three parts? Is it three leaves or is it one leaf? You think it's three? Okay, well, that's probably a good thing. I think it's one. Yeah, I think it's one because it only has one, right? It's just one. But it's got three parts to it, right? So did you know that when we pray that God has parts? No. Well, so when I pray, sometimes... I need to pray to Jesus. Jesus was God's son, right? Especially, I pray to Jesus when I need forgiveness. That happens a lot. Yeah, it does. And But sometimes, I have to pray to God's spirit. I need God's spirit in my heart because I need love. And so I pray to God's spirit to give me love. And sometimes... I just pray to God because I just need God's strength. So God's got all these parts, right? So are there three gods or are there one? One, that's right. Because all those parts are parts of God. And there's just one God, right? And it doesn't matter whether we pray to one part or another part. It just matters that we do what? Pray, that's right. All right, you can have that. Are you ready to pray? All right, here we go. Dear God, thank you for this beautiful day.
Help us to remember that all you want us to do is pray. Pray to Jesus. Pray to the Holy Spirit. And pray to you. Amen. As we enter into this time in prayer, I do invite you. I am the one running technology this morning as far as the prayer app is concerned. So, But if you would like to lift up an, a prayer, whether you're at home or here, you can go to our app and go to the prayer wall. That's Maplewood UMC NE, and it's a free app on Apple or on Android. And post a prayer, and when I read the prayers out, I will include that prayer. If you're here and you don't want to deal with technology, which is how I feel some days, um, there are blue cards in the pew and you can write a prayer down and put that in the offering plate and we'll put it on our prayer wall. And I invite you to be in the spirit of prayer. I'm going to start with opening us, then I will read through our prayer concerns and then um, we'll have a time of silence. And I do invite you, though, sometimes we get into the name in all our prayers and I think some of the most powerful times are when we listen for God's voice. So maybe in that time of silence, you listen for God's voice speaking back because he does. Let us be in the spirit of prayer. Holy God, we gather here on this day and maybe it's a little windy, but it's still a day that gives us reason to celebrate so many things. We are blessed in so many ways that you have touched our lives, that you have given us hope, that you bring us together as a community bound by your love. And oh God, as we gather, we also know the struggles of the world, those that struggle with cancer, those that are waiting for the test results, those who are wondering what tomorrow will bring because of hunger or fear. We come, God, asking for your peace and your spirit throughout all of the places of conflict and war. We pray for both sides, O oh God, that fathers won't be lost, that brothers and sisters and children won't be killed, that there might be peace in the world. And for all of those places where it seems that someone has reached the end of their rope and they think their only answer is to shoot somebody. Help us reach out before it reaches that place to bring comfort, to bring friendship, to bring reassurance. And as we gather in this place of worship, O oh God, we do ask you to fill it with your spirit that this will be a time where we are connected to one another and to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. As we lifted up last week, we pray for the Strong Tower Orphanage, which we have been part of in Haiti. We do pray for Donna as she takes yet another venture into treatments and another fight. May she take our strength with her and may she have the peace of God in her hearts. For Joan, who had a serious car accident and is in, has been in the ICU, we lift her up. For Robbie, who continues to have health issues. For Jim Graves, Leanne's dad, who's continuing to heal. We do lift up Craig, who is actually not moving to New York, but is taking a dreamed of trip to New York and getting to indeed meet some of the people that he has wanted to meet his whole life. So we celebrate with him that he has that opportunity. 
We continue to pray for Linda Bybee, for Dennis Wheeler, and Frank Hansen, who are finding new normals and healing. For those who are fighting cancer, Anne, Daryl, Joe, Austin, and Pete, holy God, give them your strength in every day and remind them that their hope is in you. For those who are part of our family and continue to care for loved ones in assisted living and nursing homes, we lift them up for Cheryl and her mom, for Heather and her dad, for Teresa and Florence, for Mary's mother-in-law, for Sue and her mom, for Matt McKeever's parents, for Judy Ogden, Lois Weiss, and Carla and her mom, for all of those in our hearts, And for Dottie, we lift them up in, your, in prayer, O oh God. And as always, we keep the teachers, those who serve our community, those who protect others, and those who have been marginalized, as well as those who are struggling. May they truly know Christ's love. Let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Feel free to stay seated and listen to the words of the song, pray, sing along, um, reflect in whatever way will open your heart to the message today. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. But heights of love, my depths of peace.
So I'm going to talk about the chosen people. Does anybody know who they are? I'm going to ask it a different way. Anybody here who's a chosen person, stick your hand in the air. <laughs> Amen. Um, yes, Israel's chosen, but guess what? So are we <laughs> in the world of this journey. The passage I'm reading comes from 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 7 through 10. It says, This stone is worth much to you who believe, but to the people who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. And also, he is a stone that causes people to stumble, a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they do not obey what God says, which is what God planned to happen to them. But you are a chosen priesthood, a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of God's own possession. You were chosen to tell about the wonderful acts of God who called you out of darkness into this wonderful light. At one time you were not a people, but now you are God's people. In the past, you had not received mercy, but now you have received God's mercy. God, may God bless the reading and hearing of his word. And, and really, as I looked at this passage, remember that the context that I said I was going to preach for this six months was, who are we as the body of Christ? Where do we fit in this story? What are we called to be? Because it is kind of a changing time in this challenge. And one of the things that I think is important, it's used occasionally in that sense of we're a ministry of all believers. We're all ministers of the word. That sense that we're all together. We have to remember that while, yes, I was called <laughs> to preach and to lead the church, so were you. Now, before that scares you, think about this passage. It says, here's the thing. You're the chosen people, the ones that have been chosen to tell the good works of God, to proclaim it. 
And that is in this world that needs to hear it. Now, I think too often that we start to think that there's nobody against us anymore. We can just gather and, and the preacher can preach and we can take it easy. But the truth is we are living in a time where indeed, just like every other time, Christianity is under attack. To think about how does this church grow. This church grows not because of me, absolutely because of God, but also absolutely because of you as witnesses to the truth of what God has done in your life. Because it doesn't really matter how entertaining I am. It matters that when people show up, they experience the love of Christ when they're here. That they see us living it out. And the importance that I think of for Peter in saying this is, here's the deal. This message has to continue to be told. We have to keep showing the world that God is real. Not just a good idea. Not a good story to tell, but real in the sense that he has changed our lives. And I am a person who every day as a pastor, I have to tell you that I become clearer and clearer. The world needs to hear God is real. There are too many people who are depressed and feeling left out. Too many people who feel judge guilty and have no hope. Too many people who are working as hard as they can work to get their head above water who can't catch a break. Think about it. In some ways, life is like the lottery. One in how many million win occasionally? But God is the truth. And when we believe in him, then that hope that we have for tomorrow, even when today is hard, is something we can count on, not just a good story. I can't even count in my life how many times in the midst of the I give up world, I go, okay, I give it to you, God, and I feel truly held up by God's hand. Not the I got through it anyway, but that I got through it because of God's hand. I think of that as being why it's so important that we come together as a community in that place of recognizing. But there's also this other thing, is to realize you're not just anybody. You're a royal priesthood. Did you hear that? You're too worried about what it means, right? <laughs> it isn't that you're perfect because that's part of understanding that I'm not perfect. That just because I'm called to be the preacher doesn't mean that I do everything exactly right every day, that I make every decision correctly. That's the good news, is that to be a royal priesthood, you don't have to be perfect. You just have to know what you believe. I talked about last week that part of being the body is staying focused on who we're called to be. Being those who know the truth, it becomes very important for us to continue to hold that up. One of the things that I've noticed in looking at is somewhere in the journey, every denomination seems to have gotten infected with fundamentalism. Don't know if you've heard the word, but fundamentalism is literally legalism. The you must do exactly this in order to be saved. And it's always going back to those rules and those laws. What's interesting about that is, as United Methodist, our whole foundation is grace. We've got a different name for all of them. Provenient grace, justifying grace, sanctifying grace. All of these are the foundation of what we believe takes us from being lost to being saved is grace, grace, and grace, not laws. As we sit here as this body, as we gather in this place, we are headed into a time where it's going to be important to remember 
that the God you believe in loves you. And that he saved you through Jesus, not through all the good works you can come up with. Not because you've reached perfection, but because God has chosen you. And I say that because as more and more people live into that fundamentalist belief of our faith, of the you better say the right things the right way and act the right way in order to be saved, we have to be able to tell the difference between what they're saying and the truth of Christ. Part of my journey as I went to seminary, I told somebody this morning, what do I remember from confirmation class? I remember the room we met in. That's what I remember from confirmation class. And I got to seminary at the age of 30, and they said, you need this book of discipline that has all the rules of the church in it. And I went, we have one? Which is some of the reasons why I mention it once in a while. So you might know you have one. <laughs> But I took that class early on, and my question was, can I believe in what the church believes in, or am I aligned with a different belief? And for me, the thing that came out all the way through was, Scripture is all about grace. Jesus is all about grace. And then there's this crazy thing in United Methodist called connectionalism. I don't see anybody looking happy about that. But that's in Scripture too. Jesus talks about how we are connected to one another. People are called into a community, not sent to the desert to live by themselves, called to be connected to each other. Because it's in that community that we can start to be able to truly support each other and probably in some of those places have the courage to stand up against those that would tear us down. And the truth is, what I see over time is the struggle to keep our faith, to keep remembering that our story is about grace, is this very struggle of there's always easier to do the wrong thing, isn't it? It's always easy to eat a candy bar than an apple. Funny, even if they're both sitting in the refrigerator. It's always easier to sit still than it is to go for a walk. It's always easier to be quiet than to stand up. But the truth is, is if we're going to reach the people of the world, we have to be willing to stand up. And we have to be willing to hold to the truth and to not just go along with whoever tells us this is the way to go. We should be able to weed out the truth. And I always think that part of knowing our faith and some of those things we should have remembered from confirmation class is that those are some of the tools that can indeed help us tell the difference between a false truth and the real truth. And I'm not saying that we're all going to agree on everything out there in the world. I'm saying on our faith, who is Jesus and how has he changed your life? Because I've met too many people who would like to say to me, if I can't remember when I was born again, then I must not have Christ in my heart. But I can tell you, I wouldn't be alive today if it weren't true that I had Christ in my heart. And I've seen it change people's whole place in the world again and again. Now, where does Boston Red Sox fit into this story? For me, it fits in when I was thinking about this part of you have to keep doing it. You must remember it is our responsibility to proclaim the truth as the body of Christ collectively and individually to a world that absolutely needs to know that truth. Is that I got to thinking about what is a Boston Red Sox fan? What my grandmother taught me, it wasn't about whether they won or lost. You're a Boston Red Sox fan, regardless. Now, I have always celebrated that she did get to see the Boston Red Sox win the World Series in her lifetime. 
I've gotten to see him win a couple times. But the truth was, being a Boston Red Sox fan for most of her life was all about watching the team that lost again and again and again. But she never missed a game. She always watched, and they were always her team, no matter what. And what God is asking us as he's called us to this royal priesthood is to be always on the team, always for him, always proclaiming into the world his love for everyone. Always living it to the best we can. We know we'll have days, but the idea that the world needs to see, the very thing that created a movement called Methodism was indeed people coming together and doing everything in their power to live their faith in Christ and to help each other. I always think about those questions of those early circles where they said, so where'd you sin this week? And people actually answered them. We wouldn't make eye contact. But the reason for that was the next part. How can we help you stay on track? If we truly live by telling the world the wonderful things God has done and remembering the wonderful things God has done, we can change the world. And even if we don't see it in our lifetime, every word we speak on behalf of God makes a difference. Every person we embrace, knowing that Christ loves them, makes a difference. Every time we say to that person who feels like nothing, that they are absolutely a beloved child of God, and wonderful to behold. We make a difference. So I leave you thinking and remembering that you are royal priesthood. This isn't a one man show or one woman show. This is all of us. Speaking into the world the truth. And being able to tell the difference. When we're told a falsehood. so that we can truly continue to live and proclaim God's message of hope. Will you pray with me? Holy and loving God, you have come to save the whole world in your love. Help us, O oh God, to remember that we need not fear, because it is love that you have rained down on us. In Jesus' name, amen.
Hear these words from Luke chapter 24, verses 45 through 48. Then Jesus opened their minds so that they could understand the scriptures. He said to them, It is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that a change of heart and lives and forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all nations, starting at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Congratulations, My, uh, the toll I got was 3,500 eggs are filled. If you are hoarding them at home, please bring them because it is next Saturday <laughs> that we will be uh, hiding eggs. Now, depending on weather, I've always said the second plan is inside. That's what the building is for, so if it's rainy and Freezing, now we've seen the kids can gather eggs pretty fast when it's cold. Um, <laughs> so if it's not an option outside, then it'll be an option inside. If you're going to help and you can't stand the cold, remember all you have to do is step inside the building. So anybody that can help, there's still a sign-up sheet for helping with that. And then next Sunday after church, we will have a potluck to say goodbye. <laughs> and really just to share a meal together. Monday, Thursday is a soup supper. Are you complicated, just come for soup. We're going to have a meal together. That's what it is with communion and remembering. I always think of Jesus and the fellowship of the disciples sitting and sharing a meal together. And it's there where he said, do this as often as you can. So this week we'll get a couple of those in, I guess. <laughs> and I hope that you'll come and join us for that. The other is that Thursday study is going to continue. We will gather this week to kind of put all the pieces in place. So if you were hoping or looking for a chance to start a study Thursday morning at 10 o'clock, we're going to be doing another one of the Gospels. Um, and I say we, I'm going to be there to help show technology. And then it's going to be led by the people in the group as they go forward. So we want to celebrate that that group is going to continue. I, I put Amanda on the on the hot seat because she dared say she'd run the technology <laughs> as long as somebody else talked. So they're going to work it out, and I am so glad because I do believe that you will get so much out of that time together. God is good. And all the time. Let's stand and sing. Oh 
You are all beloved children of God. Go in peace and have a blessed week.